So in today's video is another case study. This is a client that I have been working with for just on 30 weeks now. We began working together uh, in the earlier part of 2020, right before COVID. So this client, her name is Nikki. She's a lovely person. I've had such a great experience working with her. You're going to see her share her testimonial um, of how she has found the experience of reverse dieting. Now, Nikki's case is actually a little different. We actually didn't start working uh, to begin with with the intentions of doing uh, a reverse diet. She actually came to me with the intention of uh, losing some body fat, but it became quite evident after a few weeks of making some adjustments that her metabolism was in no place to actually continue with fat loss. So we talked about the concept of reverse dieting and metabolic restoration uh, and what that approach kind of entails. And she was definitely down to give this a go. So Nikki has um, a case where I can say this is nine out of 10 people that come to me or Team BioLane for help. So as I go through all of her starting statistics, um, you'll be able to see, I guess, where these um, characteristics kind of ring true. So I'm first gonna let you have a listen to Nikki's video. You'll be able to hear uh, firsthand her experiences. And then I'd like to be able to share with you how I've actually gone about coaching her through this reverse diet uh, and some of the, I guess, behavior changes uh, and techniques that I've used uh, to help her get to a better place metabolically, um, and then set her up for a more successful fat loss uh, in the very near future. My name is Nikki Geddes, and I'd like to share my experience with reverse dieting with the hope that it will help anyone that has been stuck in this uh, sort of mindset or situation that I have been stuck in for the longest. And I didn't even realize that I had an unhealthy relationship with food until I started working uh, with Holly. And this is uh, from the beginning of the year when we started working together with Holly. And basically I love working out. I train five times a week at the gym. And, um, but I realize now when I look back at my eating habits that I wasn't eating enough and I had a very unhealthy relationship with food in the sense that I viewed certain foods like carbohydrates and fat as enemies, you know, and I would be very restrictive with those certain food groups because I always imagined that, oh, this type of food is not good for you or this type of food is and not good for you in that sense, but in the sense that it will make me maybe gain weight and I had to sort of like limit how much of it I was taking. So anyway, when I was started working with Holly, my goal with her was to sort of like lose body fat and get lean and get ready for the summer, basically, which was going back in February. So I had been on a program with her for six weeks. And um, after six weeks, and I still wasn't losing any sort of like body fat or seeing any, any sort of like result that I was hoping I would see in the terms of weight loss or body fat loss, she sort of like suggested to me that maybe it was time for me to sort of like consider uh, reverse dieting. And honestly speaking, uh, Holly has been amazing in the sense that she has been so supportive through every aspect of this journey with me. If I was sort of like unsure about anything or, you know, sort of like doubted myself about anything, she's always been there to guide me and talk me through um, different issues that I might have had. Did I see any changes? For sure, my body weight did go up and my body fat did go up, which was expected. But out of all of that came a lot of positive things in the sense that uh, I've been hitting my PBs at the gym. I'm much stronger. My mentally, I'm much healthier and I'm much happier. When I go to the gym, I am so much, uh, you know, I'm, I'm so excited to go and work out because I have a lot of energy and a lot of things that I never realized that I didn't have before because I'd been practicing this distorted sort of like a pattern of eating for the longest and yo-yo dieting and in turn that affected everything, you know, in my, with my metabolism, with my training. And then when I started reverse dieting, I have honestly never enjoyed food as much as I have 
now. I can eat anything and I don't feel guilty. And, and I know that I'm looking at the bigger picture. So basically what I'm trying to say that is that in the, I looked at food as an enemy for the longest and I restricted my calories. Or even if I did allow myself to have something, I sort of like, you know, punished myself the next day in the sense that I would maybe restrict my calories even more or I would make sure that I pushed myself that much harder in the gym in terms of cardio or whatever. And I just want to put it out there because I've seen it with my friends, my friends around me when we do go out and I see exactly the same habits and patterns that I had been practicing for the longest. And, and I'm just so happy that I'm in this place in my life now where my mind frame is going in a positive direction with my relationship with food. And I am super excited at my next phase of um, the journey that I'm going to be taking with Holly, which is my fat loss phase, because I've been on the reverse diet for the last five months. So I just basically want to say to anyone that's um, in the situation that I was in for the longest or even considering uh, reverse dieting for whatever reason that you might need to do it, I would definitely encourage you to do it. And especially if you have a good support system around you to help you, to guide you with all of it. It's like, for me, it's the best thing that's happened to me and I wish that I had done it much sooner, you know, but it's never too late. And I just want to say a big thank you to Holly for all your support and you know, for talking me up when I kind of like got down about certain things. You've always been there to sort of like really help me through it. And I'm looking forward to the next stage of my journey. So thank you. Okay, so I've got open Nikki's uh, spreadsheet uh, here. So you can see when she came to me, she was currently weighing 86 kilograms. So her intention was to lose somewhere between 10 to 15 kilograms. And we kind of talked about how I might plot that out. Uh, we discussed, and you can see here, um, a modest rate of weekly weight loss. So it's certainly nothing aggressive. Um, obviously, undertaking fat loss in a more conservative to modest approach like this, so where your weekly weight change uh, is somewhat under 1% of your current body weight, that is far more protective of your uh, preservation of your lean body mass, so maintaining more of the muscle you already have and it can help to mitigate metabolic slowing. So we chose a relatively modest approach um, based on her current uh, information. So I used her body weight, her age, obviously incorporating gender into the equation, her current activity levels, which I'll scroll across and show you. Um, so at the moment, when we first started, she was doing very little uh, resistance training, um, but a lot more cardio. And that is so typical for the the stereotype, um, I guess, that we would expect to see in the case where people are really struggling to make changes to their body composition. It's usually a lot of cardio, um, you know, with the understanding that that might help uh, lose weight um, and very little resistance training. So that's, I used all of these metrics to help come up with her starting um, maintenance calories. So usually in the first week of coaching, I'm trying to look at, well, what is your actual maintenance? So Nikki had explained to me when she first started that she had been dieting on under a thousand calories. It wasn't recent, but that's what she'd been on in the past in order to help her with weight loss. Now, that's already a bit of a warning sign to me. If someone's had to push their calories that low, it's probably going to eventuate in some metabolic adaptation. So I even estimated at the very beginning, um, I put in an, I guess, a, a factor for having a slow metabolism. Basically what that does is it takes the equation that we use um, and then it also makes a, a multiplication that gives us a lower number to accommodate for somebody with a slower metabolism. So that's where these numbers here, 1605, is what I came up with based on her current metrics. So what we can see here is that at week one, week two, week three, down to week seven, Nikki has actually gained more weight. Now, she's only put on 2.4 kilograms. It's nothing crazy or outrageous, but here's the thing. Here are her calories in week one, 1605. 
I observed after the first week I didn't make a change because she had a menstrual cycle so there's never going to be a change because that artificially inflates your weight so I held steady for a week but then into week three still no change in fact her average weekly weight has gone up by half a kilogram so I'm bringing her calories down 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 by week seven we're at 1235 and her weight is at 88.5 so the next thing that I'm always considering is, well, are they actually tracking their macros correctly? I've had a look at Nikki's food diaries and I'm having a look at her daily entries for her foods, which is this section here. So you can see her loggings for protein, carbs and fats and fiber. I look at dietary fiber. Was there a drastic upshift in fiber that might have caused these changes? Nope. And the trend here is she was actually under eating nine times out of 10. You can see here, 100% compliance would be great. She's at 95, 87, 98, 93. And then only by weeks five and six, did she actually start to kind of get that groove and hit the targets that I'd set for her. So throughout this time, her calories have actually been under the targets and she's putting on weight on these low numbers. So it was about this time, I mean, Nikki kind of said, well, yeah, let's give it another go. My clinical mind is going, I'm not sure where this is going to eventuate. So I let her kind of see the reality of metabolic adaptation. I would talk to her about this during those first few weeks. And then by week seven, I said, this is unrealistic. I've been on these calories. I know what it's like. It's awful. You have no energy, no strength. Let's start to discuss this reverse diet process. So she agreed um, very willingly, which was excellent and away we went. From there, I have very conservative, conservatively increased her calories. So week one here of her reverse started right around COVID. Um, and you can see we're at 1521 is kind of where I took her back to her predicted maintenance. Um, and then right through to, if I keep scrolling all the way down, we reverse dieted for 25 weeks so i've got her calories all the way up to 2275 which is excellent that's a thousand calorie increase that is that's given nikki so much flexibility and one of the things that i really wanted to talk about with this process is we actually stopped taking weight so you can see here on the weight column there's quite a few blank spots we would occasionally check in but she would use a, a random weight or a scale um, at another gym or something like that but it's not a consistent reading so we actually just we talked about this um, and agreed that there is probably no point tracking our weight during this purpose if it's going to give you a lot of stress and anxiety and instead what we did was shift focus towards our performance uh, focusing on our strength in the gym and you're going to see the changes or the requests that I made uh, to Nikki's training modalities um, in a moment. We focused on energy improvement, so really just kind of observing and taking in that increased energy. Uh, we looked at the mental health component. So how are you feeling now that you have more energy? Do you feel better not having to restrict your calories all the time? So kind of embracing the positive psychological changes um, that can come from reintroducing calories. We also looked at motivation. So throughout the course of her exercise, it was very apparent week after week, just the glowing, I guess, happiness and joy Nikki was experiencing from her training. Um, more energy, more motivated to train, getting PRs week after week after week because she's now got the fuel and the energy to actually drive great performance. So those were some of the things I think um, that we kind of started to focus on during that reverse diet and not necessarily focusing on the number on the scales. Uh, we also looked at, I guess, reducing the amount of fear around certain food groups. Um, I guess there are a lot of folks still out there that have the belief that there are good and bad foods and that we shouldn't eat certain foods at certain times of the day. So there was really a lot of education um, with each of my updates, kind of talking about, you know, experimenting with foods that might have previously been deemed good or bad. So this was quite an eye-opening experience uh, for Nikki. I think we really helped her um, develop a better relationship with food 
um, and an understanding of how you know energy balance works and that if she wants to enjoy the festivities at her 18 her son's 18th birthday she can do that so it was really rewarding for me as a coach to observe all of these positive changes um, just every week you would see you know just more energy I think Nikki was originally very quiet and reserved and then by like I don't know halfway mark I've got the full-blown Nikki she's back and it was just a pleasure to work with her some of the changes I want to talk about now I guess the exercise um, adjustments that we made so obviously at the very beginning um, the ratio of cardio to resistance training was absolutely skewed in favor of cardio so she was doing a hundred minutes plus of HIIT training that's a lot of high intensity exercise uh, and a lot of uh, low, in low intensity steady state and very little resistance training um, so we kind of got talking about you know what is your goal body composition um, do we need to make some adjustments to the types of training you're doing to facilitate that goal to drive progress so immediately we kind of looked at um, changing that ratio towards or favoring more resistance training she ended up being able to work with a personal trainer and even during COVID um, thankfully the area that Nikki was located she was actually able to use a small um, private gym facility um, so that was awesome that she still got to do that during that COVID um, and the other thing as well is we also we also looked at reducing her volume of cardio throughout that reverse diet period so we started kind of tapering it back down you can still see here it was quite high in the beginning she was doing a lot of walking and I think part of that even though that wasn't a discussion that I had had with her I think initially everyone that starts reversing when they're told well we're going to be eating more it's almost like there's this little messenger in the back of our minds going you need to move more do some more walking do something so I think probably what happened here is there was that little bit of nervousness and feeling the need to compensate for the added calories but I think after you know many weeks of kind of repeating the same message um, you know talking about you know the body adapts to exercise and it also can become unconditioned to exercise if we do it progressively as well with little change to our energy balance so that was awesome we kind of were able to taper that back down you can see here by week six she's starting to trust that process a little bit more um, she was still doing a little bit of um, planned walking here but we've tapered it right back down as I scroll through I think we averaged by about week 10 or 11 7,000 steps so you can see here 7,000 7,000 8,000 7 it was kind of around that and then we kind of completely pulled out all of the high intensity cardio and the purpose that that serves is we are still going to undertake fat loss in the future with Nikki in fact we have just started uh, in the last two weeks so the intention was to kind of get her to a place where she has relatively low baseline cardiovascular fitness because if she can maintain her body composition without that that's awesome because now when we start that fat loss phase we have a tool to be able to call upon to help create a bigger deficit um, when we need it when we can no longer rely on nutritional decreases calorie changes alone so now we can go oh well we've been doing no hit cardio I've got really terrible baseline fitness well now when I do start doing that I'm going to get a great return as far as energy expenditure it's going to require a lot of work for my body to go and participate in that high intensity activity so we've pulled that right back and you can see she's consistently getting in about 300 minutes of resistance training which is just awesome so during the 20 odd weeks I think we've been going for 20 where are we 25 weeks there have been some incredible uh, strength gains now Nikki hasn't been giving me regular photo updates again we weren't focusing on body composition at that point it was more about performance feeling good nourishing the body getting out of that diet mentality just to give her a rest but if we look at her before and after pictures there is not a massive change to be honest um, we've got some weight numbers but they are probably inaccurate since they've been on different scales so I can't really I'm not comparing apples for apples so on paper it looks like there's a big difference but they're not the same scale so I'm looking at this face value at the two images that I see and yes there has been some body fat regain 
but there's also been a heck of a lot of muscle, lean body mass gain as well, which is so exciting because now when we diet down, we can get rid of that body fat. It's doing the work to build the muscle that requires the most amount of time. So she's in such a good position. Her calories at the moment, as I said before, are at 27.75. So I'm not going to give you the starting fat loss stuff because I'm going to do a follow-up video on this so that you can see the transformation. Um, but I'm just so excited, um, I guess, for this whole process, just to see the positive uh, mental shift. And she mentions, in, mentions this in her video. Um, and honestly, as a coach, I couldn't be more happy for how this reverse diet has gone. And I'm excited to take her through this fat loss phase now where she's actually in a position, metabolically speaking, to have a successful fat loss where we're not having to crunch numbers that are you know, sub 1000. Instead, we're starting from 22, 2300 calories. So now that initial deficit, it's going to be far more sustainable. She's going to be able to do that for a lot longer than she could if she was eating 900 calories. It's going to be a more enjoyable process. Um, we're also going to be implementing some strategies that she probably hasn't used before, like diet breaks, uh, to help make sure we preserve her new accrued lean body mass. Uh, and that's also going to help that metabolic slowing. And we're gonna do it at a nice modest pace uh, again, to help minimize the amount of metabolic adaptation so that we don't have this drastic change um, as she's experienced in the, in the past, uh, working with other trainers or coaches on very low calories, dieting to the extreme. So I'm excited for this process. Um, I hope you guys get to stick around and see the transformation. Um, because and also hear her story and how she's experienced it. That's it. I just wanted to share that with you. I think it's awesome to be able to see uh, the positive changes, very little body change in my opinion. Um, and I think also if there are any um, body fat increases, we can see just based on her testimonial, just how much all of the other stuff outweighs that one number on the scale. So guys, if you have any questions about reverse dieting or your uh, biggest fears might be, you know, fear that body weight regain, please comment, leave me a question below. I do check the comments on these YouTube videos as often as I can. Um, I would love to be able to help you work through these processes uh, and feel better about your body. Thanks so much for watching guys. I will see you next time.